Hi everyone, I welcome you all in a new video tutorial. In my previous tutorials, I have discussed how to model, analyze and design a building. In this tutorial, I will discuss how to design foundation of a building using ETAPS results. Before that, if you are new to my channel, please subscribe to it and press the bell icon so you can be notified on my next uploads. In this tutorial, I will discuss a footing design using manual approach or excel sheets. First, I will discuss the steps to design a footing. Then using spreadsheets, we will design concentric and eccentric footing. So let's begin. In any building project, the isolated footing is sometimes located at various positions. It can be located at the center, corner and edge of the building plan due to the location of foundation within the property line. The major consideration in the design of footing is to calculate how the soil pressure will act beneath the footing when the load is concentric and eccentric. To understand this, let's look at this animation. When the load is concentric, that means when the column center of gravity of the column is coinciding with the center of gravity of the footing. In this case, the load is rectangular or the soil pressure is rectangular. When we move a column at a distance less than L by 6, then the soil pressure beneath the footing becomes trapezoidal. So in order to calculate this soil pressure, we can divide this area into a triangle and a rectangular and accordingly we can calculate the soil pressure. When we move further the column at a distance equal to L by 6, L stands for length of the footing, then the soil pressure is assumed to be triangular. And when this column is further moved to the edge of the footing, so this becomes the case of edge footing. In this case, the soil pressure is assumed to be triangular, triangular of the certain portion and the rest of the portion considered tension. Similarly, is the case when the footing is moved along the y-axis. Sometimes, the footing is eccentric to both axes, as in the case of corner footing shown to you. In that, the soil pressure is distributed in a way as shown in the shaded triangular patch. Now, when this column position varies to other corner, again the soil pressure varies in a triangular way. Similar is the case for the position of column at the bottom right corner and same for the bottom left corner. So the important point here to understand is we have to understand how the soil will respond based on the position of column. Once the soil pressure is calculated, the rest of the design procedure is same as shown here. So first we have to find the area of the footing, then we will assume the depth and after that we will check the footing against 1.2 by shear. Then we will finalize the depth and after that we will calculate the footing against bending. Then the bearing stresses will be checked and finally the area of steel and development length is calculated. So these are the steps to calculate or design the footing. In order to calculate the area of footing, we have got this equation, total load, this is the service load, that means this is not affected load, service load divided by allowable soil pressure, so this value will be given to us from geotechnical investigation. So in order to calculate affected soil pressure, we just need to calculate factor load and divide it with the area of footing. After that, we have to check the footing again when we shear so basically this is the bending action in one direction which is and the critical section is located at a section d from the face of the column so from this equation we can calculate the one way shear and this and uh, this equation b is the width of section phi is the detection factor so for shear usually it is taken as 0.75 
a lambda is modification factor for normal type of concrete and it is taken as 1. D is a critical depth of footing. So once we calculate the one we share, we will check the depth. If it is less than the assumed depth, that means we will say our assumed depth is okay. Then we will go for checking the punching shear. Basically, it is a measurement of diagonal tension caused by the effect of column load. So column tries to sink in and the footing slap. So we don't want this situation in actual practices. In order to avoid this circumstances, we need to check our footing against punching shear or to be shear. So in this case, the inclined cracks may appear at a distance t by 2 from the face of the column. So these are the equations. And from this, we can easily calculate the shear force. And finally, we will check the depth against 2 way shear. So if it is less than the assumed one, then we will say our assumed depth is okay. If it is greater than the assumed one, then we will assume. Then we will go for revision of the depth. And finally, we will calculate the moment, and the moment is considered critical at the face of the column. So the moment calculation is easy because we know this uniformly distributed soil pressure under the footing. We just need to cut a section here, and after that, apply the equation of equilibrium and we can easily calculate the moment the maximum moment and finally using this equation we can calculate the area of steel or the steel ratio which is rho all the parameters are shown here where a s stands for area of steel phi is the reduction factor f i is yield strength of steel fc dash is the compressive strength of concrete and b is width of the footing now, as we have understood the basics and important step of design of footing. Now, let's go back to the Excel sheet which I have designed to design a footing. So, this is the Excel sheet that the steps which I have shown you just now. You just need to put these values. Service load from e tabs are set. So, you can use any software. You can calculate the base reactions from this software. Just put it in the Excel sheet and quickly we can design a footing within 2 to 3 minutes. So this is dead load, live load, dead moments and live moments in X and Y direction. So these values are to be taken from E tabs or set. B is the width of column. The description is also written here. Footing type, as I told you the 8 footing type, it is, whether it is concentric, let me show you here. Whether the footing is located top right corner, either it is located at top left corner or it is bottom right corner, bottom left corner. So depending upon the condition or the position of column, you can choose your footing accordingly. So this is basically the offset, how much your column is away from the center of footing. So we can easily uh, define this value from our building plan. Similar is the case in the y direction. Fc dash is the compressive strength of concrete used in footing. So usually it is assumed as 4. You can also go for 5. So this is yield strength Fy assumed as 60. Concrete strength of column because we need this value in the calculation of bearing stress. So we can assume 4 allowable soil pressure. This is to be taken from geotechnical investigation. If you don't know this value, you can also assume the soil profile is ST and accordingly you can choose the allowable soil pressure. Or you can also consult a good engineer working in your area. So he will tell you about the actual practices of the design. Depth of base of the footing. Again, this is to be determined from geotechnical investigation report. But for normal buildings up to 2 to 3 story, we can keep this value up to 4 to 5 feet. Weight of the soil, it is assumed as 100 pounds per cubic feet. But again, it is to be determined from geotechnical investigation. So now we have to assume the depth in this row. 
So, and rest of the values will be calculated by this sheet. Now first we have to check the authenticity of the sheet, whether the sheet gives the correct results or not. So I have compared my sheet with the StarPro software by putting the same values which are shown here. For the same load condition, 245, 200, my design results are length and width is 10 by 10 feet, thickness is 2 feet. And for 5 number bar, this is 25 number because I am using 5 number. Okay, now let's go to the start flow. Let's see what is so for length is 10 feet, width is 10 feet, thickness is also 2. So footing reinforcement is number 6. So I have chosen number 5 and spacing it 8.71. Similarly, reinforcement bar number 6 and spacing it 8.09. So size of the footing is same. Let me change the bar value in order to compare the value from start row. So choose here number 6. So this shows, so let's compare the values from this start row. So this is showing 10, 10 feet, 2 feet, number 6 at 8.71, number 6 and y axis, x axis and 8.09 spacing and similar values are shown here. 10 feet, 10 feet and thickness is 2 feet, number 6 bar, so 18 number bar are to be used at 6.3 cent to the center and similarly 6 in number bar are to be used as 6.3 inch center to center. This shows almost a similar results when compared to the Start Pro software. So in order to design the footing in our case, first we will go to the ETEPS model in order to define the base reactions. So as you can see in order to shorten the video time, I have already modeled the building. In fact, I have analyzed the building. So for base reactions, First we will calculate this icon and from this icon we will choose the dead load case. Under dead load case we will be going for Fz, Mx and Fy because these three values, the remaining three values Fx, F and Mz will be very smaller so that is why we will not consider uh, for the normal buildings. In fact you can uncheck these options because for this kind of building, for three-story building or two-story building, these values are very small when you are considering the gravity loading. But in case of lateral loading, these values could be higher. So I can show you, this is a simple residential building, so these values will be small. Mostly we will rely on this Fz value. So as you can see that in all the columns, Fz is 77, uh, Fz value is 77.378 and remaining 2, the moment in x and y are not more than 2.44 which is very small value. So first we will design the interior column and after that we will go for edge and corner column. So for interior column the values are 181.824. And remaining two values are 0 0.4, so they are near to 0, so we are not going to consider that. I will just take dead load value as 1 181, so round it off to 182, just put 182 here. Now we have to put the live load value. So for live load again, go to display support reactions option from here, choose live and click apply. For the same column, so live load is 27.99. So just assume is assume it as 28. So we just put the loads width and depth of the column is 18 by 18 inches in my case. So whatever the your case is you can vary these values and rest of the values I showed are to be taken as default 
Now I am starting my assumption from one fit of the depth. So one fit of the depth we can go a bit. Now see the required footing size in case of the square footing that is 6.79 by 6.79. If you are going to design the rectangular footing in that case you have to choose the width of the footing and automatically it will calculate the length. For example if I am choosing the width of the footing as 7 feet it will give me the length of footing as 6.6 .6 feet. But see so the final dimensions you have to put in this columns. So I have kept 10 foot by 10 foot which is more than the required value. So in order to go for the economical design we have to choose 7 feet by 7 feet. So under 7 bit by 7 feet it is also giving us the footing size is safe. If you are going to take the smaller value so it will give you the warning device footing size. Since the minimum requirement is 6.79 by 6.79, so we will go a bit higher up to 7 by 7. And after that, we have to perform other checks. We have to check our footing in 2 way shear and 1 way shear. So, in 2 way shear and 1 way shear, it is saying the required depth is 12.35 and we have assumed 12, so that means it is not okay. We have to revise our footing depth. Again, go back to the top of the sheet. Now we will assume 1.5 feet. So 1.5 feet. So at the 1.5 feet, our footing is safe in two way shear as well as in one way shear. Now we will check our footing in maximum bending moment in order to calculate the flexural steel. So all the calculations are done automatically. You just need to choose the bar size. And in bearing spreads, our footing is also okay, and the final design can be shown here. So we will be needing 7 feet by 7 feet with a 10 or 1.5 feet of depth and 9 numbers, number 6 bar 88.7 in center to center. So this is the design of our interior footing. Now for corner footing, what we have to do, we have to put the offset value how much the footing is away from our center of the footing because if you are going to design this footing at this column for a center steel x direction with the same dimension which we have just kept here 7 feet by 7 feet so the maximum offset is required 2.75 feet so you just need to put 2.75 feet here so 2.75, there is no eccentricity in y direction. So let's check whether our footing is safe. So see, the footing is size is safe. And all the values, assume depth is also fine. And it is also safe in bearing. So the final design in this case is 7 feet by 7 feet. And similar is the case for corner footing because for the corner footing, you have to provide eccentricity in both direction. So just put the value here, for example 1.25 I'm putting here. So it will give you the same values. So in this way we can easily design any type of footing located at any position in a building plan. So let me remind you that, but for edge footing and corner footing, we don't go for individual isolated footing because the designing of the corner column footing with a centric load, the best solution for stability consideration is to tie the corner footing to an adjacent column footing with a beam. In simple words, we go for the strap footing because it also, we go for the strap footing. So this becomes economical and also it provides a more stable foundation. So guys, this brings to the end of today's tutorial. In my upcoming tutorial, I will design the foundation using SAF and Start Pro. So if you find this tutorial useful, please do like and share. And if you have any doubt, please write in the comment box. Thank you and have a nice day.